what's up? Name's Rec, I'm a coach, welcome to another edition of the sample. So, <clears throat> given that it's pre-season 12, and given that these are probably going to get nerfed, and actually not long after I started recording this, uh, there were a few, <laughs> a few PBE drops that actually suggested that some of the stuff that I'm going to see today is going to get nerfed, I'm just going to make this as plain and simple as possible. I'm going to talk about something that's a little bit more synergistic, and how things work, and how you and how you go about theory crafting in the best ways possible. So today's particular uh, particular vod comes from a bit of a mainstay of the roast. Actually, he's been involved in both uh, League and Overwatch since uh, since the beginning of the roast. His name's Splenectomy. I don't know why he named himself Splenectomy. You're gonna have to ask him that. But <laughs> but Splen has been around for a long time. He has casually entered all of his games for me to enjoy reviewing and. Uh, at least today, we've got something nice and different and interesting that we can actually review. So for those of you who are unaware, we had a few talks about how builds have changed over the course of, um, like over the course of, uh, like preseason and everything that was going with it together. And basically we came into some ideas about like what builds would go well on what characters and so on and so forth. And for shits and gigs. Splen and I came up with an idea of playing uh, Even Shroud Nico. So Nico was uh, an interesting little uh, little character that we thought might actually build up to some interesting like choices, build choices, item choices, rune choices, all that. And we thought we could find a way to sort of work with that. Now, I'm not expecting this to be perfect. I'm going to be honest with you. In fact, I'm expecting a lot of hell to break loose in this, but at the very least, we're going to assess theory crafting and how it works and how we can actually work with it together. So in this particular build choice, we wanted to make use of two things. We wanted to make use of Glacial Augment in order to provide the mini exhaust and since Nico's kit and all of our engaging like processes are actually really good for this, it's a good thing to consider. And then on top of that, we wanted to test even shroud as a damaging engage tool. If you actually like hit all your, all your stuff correctly. So, and given that Nico had the abilities to actually like do all this, it became a pretty interesting uh, sort of thought process to work with. Now this is uh, for the support build for Nico, not a, uh, not an AP build. Um, I'm thinking that the damage on this might be a little bit like you might be relying on your teammates a little bit more, but like compared to something like Thrash, you would like, you know, build even shroud and still have good engagements because the person that he like locks down is actually in that bit of pain. But I think the better point for this is that all of the CC involved in this is AOE and there's a lot of really good sort of like moments that work with that. So I want to try and use that to the fullest extent. So we've gone with the standards for the cos uh, for the inspiration tree, which is uh, a glacial augment, boots, biscuits, and <clears throat> cosmic insight. So we get the, we get the item CDR and everything that goes in with that. So this is a pretty like solid, pretty stock standard sort of idea for the inspo tree. And given that we're trying our glacial augment as a test run, we're going to see how this works out. Now secondaries were a bit more iffy because obviously in every other universe you're going to look at it and be like, oh well, you know, just go just go inspo secondary. But it's our it's our it's our mainstay this time. So we opted, uh, Splendor's opted this time to go for Transcendence and Scorch. Now, these are pretty solid choices. Now, obviously for the haste, it's good to have Transcendence. It does get a bit, you, you do kind of start like overcapping, not so much overcapping, but you start really getting into muddy waters when, when, if you build too many ability haste items. It's not the worst thing in the world. Scorch is an interesting one though, because in bot lane, most uh, characters will always go for the armor shards as even Splen has here. So having Scorch for the free magic damage and do, and landing your poke is actually really good. And it's something I recommend if it's uh, something you can get away with. This is uh, one of those situations. Since you're not running double AP, there's no chance anyone's going to run MR shards into you, which means that this damage doesn't get mitigated as much. And it's actually a good little amount to help chunk in lane with. So this is what we're gonna roll with. And then yeah, basically standard, standard shards for trading and uh, poking in lane. I normally will recommend attack speed shards if your character can utilize them in any which way. And truthfully, most characters can. It's just a matter of choice preference or whether or not you scale better with the, the adaptive. But in most cases, two autos is better than one. So can't really argue with that, can you? So, <laughs> so keeping that in mind, this is what we're rolling with. Uh, generally, if anyone's got any other interest, I think Predator is a really good build for Nico as well. You go Predator with Ingenious Hunter and then Inspo Secondary. 
and just you know make like make all those crazy moves around the map though i do think a lot of people are still sort of funneling into more ap-esque type builds with nico not really fussed on that i'm still waiting to see more information but i do think that these are ideas that we can definitely roll with obviously not a lot of people are playing this character because it's more of a specialist pick but i think there are some interesting ways that you can utilize nico as a character and i figured we'd do something a little different for this since you know we're coming on christmas and i want to have a bit of fun so yeah we're gonna see how this goes i uh, like i said i still haven't watched the vod at all this is purely a theory crafting idea that means that like me and community and splen sort of like derived from all my notes so i'm interested to see how this goes let's uh get into it shall we uh, it's a lot of background noise but i can get over that that's league music okay now, I just want to make sure that this works. There we go. Because I just got to make sure that I can draw on the screen again. <laughs> Sound effects are a bit loud. Maybe if I just turn down my volume rather than me thing of volume, that would be easier. I mean, I never realized just how many people have um have sounds wow someone actually had an early wait who had the early game pink ward Wait, it was Echo's room? Uh, Echo's thing? It was Rengar's ward. Okay. <laughs> Everyone's just looking at it the same way. Now, this is an old thing about Nico. I don't know if anyone does this anymore, but like... Obviously, you know, you take on the form of somebody and that somebody is, you know, noticeable, so to speak. But this is just strange for me. But obviously in bot lane, Nico is a little hard to like sort of manage with this whole thing because everyone's like, oh, like what character are you going to take on the form of? Honestly, don't take on any weird shit. Do the simplest thing possible. Take on the form of your AD carry. Confuse the ever living shit out of the, uh, out of the other person just for that brief second by just posturing around the CS like you're both there and then go up for the trade, if you want. It's not necessary, but it's interesting. Now, the other thing as well is that, like, if you posture, posture as two separate targets, it, it makes life easier for, like, for you and for your AD carry to actually go ahead and do this. Obviously, you'll start giving it away pretty quickly. But unless you've already got, like, bush, uh, what's the word? Uh, bush priority, and you want to, like, disguise yourself as the jungler, I don't think it's ever going to work. So it's not necessary. It's just something that, that like, I just think is hilarious. But yeah, I thought I'd just put that out there. Now, generalized, like, thoughts for playing a zoning slash mage ADC. I am a little awkward on you taking W first. I personally would prefer Q or E, just purely because E and Q for your early game uh, engage is actually amazing. But if you're going to do, like, something cheeky with that, I don't know. We'll find out. But the main thing is that you want to be able, especially against shorter range enemies than yourself, you want to be able to take either bush and then make sure that you can basically create a, a zone of death that when you like root them up, like Jinx can just engage on it with uh, with extra like autos and get free poke. And that way, when you get an advantage in lane, you're actually able to just sort of like say you root out from here. And then they just converge on it from the opposite side. And that way, both on both occasions, even if they engage back onto you, there's no way that they can actually stop the both of you at the same time. Ergo, the trading pattern's a little harder to work with. I see the trick. I, I rate it. That's good trading. If we're going purely for like the early game autos, you know what? You've uh, you've won me over just purely for that. So well done. But since you actually have the advantage, you should be getting more aggro with this. It is funny watching them try to attack that though. And since it doesn't like 
Since it doesn't cost anything, I guess you're kind of coming away with a good defensive edge there. But, like, the problem is... It's not going to be perfect. I like that. Might have to flash out, though. Oh! Should have done that way earlier. But, yeah, let's talk about this play. So, I rate the use of the E. This is actually really good. All things considered, I wasn't expecting Kaiser to stand so close. But, yeah, you actually go for this perfectly. Get the max range E. It hits perfectly on the edge. You get a couple of free autos as they go to trade. Before they go to trade the second time, you should actually W that so you actually block Senna's auto. But either way, you come up, you ignite, you get the aggro with that. Now, when, the moment this happens and you get rooted, you have to get out of this, this particular predicament you're in. Use your potions and flash the opposite way when she goes for this. Like, when she goes for this the second time, you have to leave. You have to leave as fast as possible. Like just flash up the river and just get out because you you don't want to you don't want to trade out for this. But yeah, she tra she trades the flash onto you. She also has barrier, so that's that's good. She wastes all of her stuff to make that work, so I'm cool with it. Totally okay with that. So yeah, big only big detriment to this particular like build right is obviously your early game items are not great. Like you're building purely a tank item to to work out with this and become a like a, an actual engaged supporter as Nico. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's not it's not safe, right? And like the whole point of being a of being a, a support like a, a normally as a mage support you just want to like stack damage and do more damage. But I want to believe nine times out of ten that you're actually like you know capable of doing like good engagements as a you know as a support. And that's why I want this to work out. I would rather that ward be a little bit further back over the wall where blue is so that you can see them earlier. And then you place another ward either just like by the by pixel or something like that and just keep the wards safe. Because the other thing as well is if you see them coming down towards you, there's like less of a chance that they will uh, they will be able to use the plant to go over the wall without you noticing in the first place. No point going up now, just wait. Just stay back. Nice. But yeah, we had a good use of Glacial Augment to start off with there because the slow field plus the exhaust means you get the good trade. Very happy with that so far. Now it's just a matter of using this to your advantage and actually keeping elite. The problem is the wave's too big here, so you can't really do much extra with that. So I'm cool with it. I like that you're just using, utilizing the order to actually go up and do that. I am hoping that that doesn't actually, like, that doesn't actually uh, proc against something like First Strike. But, yeah. Oh! I want to talk about good reactive gameplay. Because that right there, that made me... Made me semi chub. He, like, he notices that Senna walks up. And says, you know what? I can do that too. And actually just goes straight in with that shot. Hits perfectly. Now, we actually theory crafted this before, right? Every character that gets rooted from separate thingos gets the field. The field doesn't stack though. But the field being in place will actually root up over like each area if more than one person gets rooted in place. And they both have Glacial Augment. So like the one best thing about this is that you've literally just hit this over the both of them for free. The first target that gets hit cops this. And the field goes perfectly out behind and also uh, puts the exhaust, the mini exhaust onto Jinx. Not Jinx. Uh, Kaisa. Which gives Jinx, was what I was going to say, gives Jinx the opportunity to actually walk in and do this. So, one thing we theory crafted as well, this is like a note, like which is what, what I mentioned before, right? We actually theory crafted that if two people have Glacial Augment and they both root the same target on, on, on opposite sides, there is a possibility that you can create quite a nice freezing field. However, it's really freaking awkward and it's randomized, the... the the roots that it takes out i don't know why it's just so it's really awkwardly coded but in this situation right no matter what happens as long as you hit a target and you get the the veins like happening from there it does almost always track out a um track out a field that does like seem to find another target i don't know why it just seems i don't know if it's based on the angle you throw it from but it's designed so that the like the y shape that it creates the first path is from the person that throws it, and the other two are basically in the nearest vectors to other characters in the area. So try to aim it so that you get, like, 
you, that you always will like be able to catch someone off the back end of that because in this particular case obviously they're both standing on top of each other so it's free as shit and you get really good really good engaging power off that but the main thing is that if you throw it like i'll just do it like this again if you throw it as an example at kaiser from here obviously you're not gonna do it from this range because it's possible the, the y shape will hit center that's there that's like the main thing you want to like keep an eye on when you've got glacial augment in the pocket as well i know it sounds like i'm rambling because it's honestly there's a lot of really good things to actually view from this but yeah such well played like skill shot management oh no never mind flash w that's all right Now, new tech aside, we need to make sure we cover all the fundamentals of uh, playing bot lane in this case as well. Oh, we're going for Q. We should have gone for E. I would have been. Be I would have felt better going for E in this situation. I get like for the like for the dam if you were damaging, you would want to go for this. But truthfully, since you're going this even shroud build, I would rather you max E first here, just so that you have more CC to churn out. I say just take the armor here honestly I would have just sat on the one control for the time being only because we're at a point now where you don't I don't know if it's going to happen but I feel like a gank is coming bot side and you won't need any more wards for the time being and I really want you to get to that item spike as fast as possible because you're really just you're playing fast and loose with this and I and I like you got to make sure you get to the item spike as fast as possible so you can snowball and continue being an engage but yeah I mean the good news is we're at six minutes and you've already got like you know all this all these kills happening Oopsie. But yeah, I'm still trying to figure out like how it's coded with the with the glacial augment uh, slow field. As far as I'm aware, it tries to track to the nearest person, and that's where the Y shape actually comes from. Whilst obviously trying to maintain like the whole laws of physics against walls and stuff. But again, every single time I see it, it be attempted, it just seems to cast out in random directions, and I don't know why. Like I can't actually figure it out for myself at this point. I'm gonna need someone smarter than me to actually see it for me love that almost every single engage that you've made as Nico has actually resulted in something like going well for the lane so you should very much like take solace in the fact that if you are hitting these correctly or you wasted that E you really should have held on to that actually but yeah Would have been a little more careful about throwing that at max range. Is he just getting angry in lane there? He's just sitting there. No one's happy at all. I would have possibly pinked that. Unless you're going to move over to Dragon now and check for that. But not the worst thing in the world. Maxed out the trinket already. Like that. Just for note's sake, since you know that they're obviously going to like fan against this wall, I would really have just tried to just walk up to about here and just chuck it the E through the minion just to extend it. But I mean, it's obviously not as cool as Seraphine's one that just keeps extending it. But I mean, at least getting the empowered, uh, like the empowered use of it, will always be nice for you. Because like the you want the larger radius just for safety's sake. Definitely should have reacted to the the river, but truthfully, I, I would blame the Rengar for not uh, having that water. But that's uh, his own problem, really. Easy enough. I was gonna say, if you flash E, that it might seem like a good idea, but I don't see anyone being able to follow up. And you just read my mind, apparently, and just went straight in on it. <laughs> Warwick will come down. Use your biscuits if you're, hand you're planning on staying. Use your biscuits if you're planning on staying, dog. Come on. If the plan was here this whole time, you should be using the biscuits. Come on. 
He's here still. Like, you should be using the biscuits. Race done. I swear Glacial Augment does work if utilized correctly. Like, I, I see it, like, unfolding in front of me, and I just, I think it's got really good uses. This is not going to help you out at all. Wait, that actually works like that? Huh. I mean, I guess because it's a pet, it would definitely do it anyway, but it was close enough to the thing to be a champion model, so you actually, you know what? You actually saving that damage is really good. Well done. Don't even know if you intended to do that, but even so, that's actually really cool. It just draws turret aggro for free. I I thought purely because it's a generated unit, it wouldn't matter, but because it's close enough, it actually does. So there you go. Alright, so we have even shroud. Me likey. Are we going full AP from here? Oh, we're going for that. Wait, if we're going for Zonyas, we really should have considered going uh, Ingenious Hunter Secondary. And Predator. Oh, but then again, we want a Glacial Augment, so no, maybe not. Maybe less about the... Maybe less about Predator. I don't know, I think there's ways to, like, utilize Ingenious Hunter there as well. Maybe. It's a possibility. But Cosmic, Cosmic Insight does do enough. Depends. I would really want to see your damage stats at the end of this. But I obviously... Oh, wait, no, hang on. I think you sent me a screenshot of it. Maybe I'll have to check that. Maybe I will have to check that. Got lens. I really wish you'd ward deeper. You've got the aggro, like you've got the aggressive ability to do that. Is a pointless pink ward. You, like don't forget that dragon's been gone for a while now. There's no reason to pink that at all. That pink ward should be aggressively like shoring up areas of the universe. So like, like pixel brush here where you are. That's a place to pink ward because it actually covers warding areas and that's worthwhile. Wasting it in the pit when there's no objective to take unnecessary. Don't do that. Check bush. Nice. And yeah, we'd like to avoid, like, spending that there. I really wish you hadn't used your W. Oh my god, he walked back into it. Oh fuck, just, just call the game off now. Fuck it, who cares? <laughs> Jesus. You'd think Splendid had been watching the roast all his life. That's free. I can't see that game not ending off the back of that. That's so free. Dear lord. Hey, Splen, why can't you play like this every game, huh? I know I said I wanted to have a bit of fun with it, uh, this, this Christmas rolling around, but... Oh, wait, that hit? Oh, my lord, he's just... Just fucking hitting bangers on every fucking angle. Look at that. Seriously, Splen, just do this every game and you'll be fucking... You'll be platinum in no time. Just, who cares? Just do that every time. I'm really surprised. So, I'm really surprised, right? I have to go back to this play because it just bugs me. But you shouldn't, like, if your plan was to engage, and I really just want to make this clear, you know that they're all mid, so there's no reason to W the bush next to you. But they should, they like, they should be aware that you're coming anyway, but it's not warded, obviously, so there's, yeah, so there's no point in using W here. That way, what I want you to be able to do is be able to utilize that speed boost to actually run in and hit this ulti much cleaner than the fact that they all just walk straight at you because they're idiots. So I would rather you hit W as you're like walking up so that they, they see you trying to cut off there and you just like, you know, you come in and you hit the, the big fat ulti on them. But because they're silly enough, he was actually silly enough to actually go for that. I'd, I'd be happy if you just got the two of them, but getting Warwick as well, that's just, that's just freedom dollars right there. But yeah. I assume the yellow numbers are the extended damage that you get on top of your uh, even shroud, which I saw a lot of numbers there. Hang on, just just because I'm curious. 8, 24, 11, 12, 13. I assume those are all dot numbers that you're getting from that. If I assume those are supposed to be... What's going on there? There we go. If I am assuming correctly that those are supposed to be like additional numbers from even shroud, then uh, nice. If not, I've got no idea what those numbers are for. I've never seen them before. They change the color of the bandies when you hold tab, or am I tripping? That dude must be tripping. Tripping balls, man. You might be better off selling the biscuit and actually getting an item. The biscuit's not really worth anything at this point now. You don't have any reason to sustain. But yeah, apart from the 
subpar pink warding in the pit. We're doing pretty good so far. Don't get me wrong, the ward in the pit's gonna help out right now, but ooh, hello, Senna Also, just a note, like, you gotta remember that the, uh, the current state of the universe... Nice supporting. Okay, so the current state of the universe implies that you should probably be topside, just purely because there's no reason to be bot lane right now. But, I mean, that's considering purely the objectives, etc. What a nice chap. He even gave you blue buff. Look at that. People are going to like start messaging me and going, Wreck, you obviously doctored this footage. Look at that. ADC and support being nice to each other. People lining up to eat skill shots. That guy's dead. People are definitely going to think that this is staged. I'm telling you right now, chat, this is a ranked game that occurred. This, this is a ranked game that 100% occurred in OS. I mean, maybe because it's OS. But even then, Os is just as vile and toxic on its best day as well. You've made a mistake here. You walked away. Don't forget, Jinx is strong, but she's not that strong. So when this occurs, right, I just want you to be aware, when you actually stride away from here, it was bad enough that you took that tower here, you should have just used the biscuit, and then just waited nearby. Now, the big awareness point here is that you, like, you can see the people that are mid, there's no reason not to worry about that. But if you want to set, you've already got the setup for dragon, which means you should just be over by your AD carry within this 10, within this 10 second gap, like within this point, because then from here Yasuo goes bot and kills Jinx. And that's what you wanted to like try to avoid if possible. But yeah. So what we got. Hello, Warwick. This ulti is only made useless by one very obvious fact. Remember that you're not AP. But the problem here is that you shouldn't be going for these engage like these gigantic engagements. Yeah, uh, without anyone there to follow up. You're basically, a, like, you're playing as a tank support now. You're just tinier and slightly funnier. Because, you know, you're Nico and you're cute and stuff, right? So, yeah, you don't want to be going for these engagements the way you are. Like, don't get me wrong, this is a nice catch and all, but you shouldn't be using your ulti. You should be using just E and Q just to poke him down, make him scared. And then, yeah, like, you want to have the ulti available so that you can use your W or, like, flash and, like, move into them, like, when the time comes around and you just get all of that working out. The good news is that he still gets picked off because Rengar is somewhat close enough, but you would have done the same amount of damage and worry with your E, and you'd have your ulti in the pocket for if they come to engage towards Dragon. It doesn't look like they're going to do so, which means you get a free Dragon, but I want you to keep that in mind if you're going to go for these, like, silly type of engagements. <coughs> Again, I know people are going to pull me up and think, hey, Wreck, this is definitely doctored gameplay. I'm assuring you right now it is not. <laughs> this is this is a, a day in paradise, essentially. If you were ever like thinking just how good can it possibly get playing League of Legends, this is it. This is when all the stars align right here. That's a slow. He used wall. You accidentally walked into that? The fact that your ulti is up again makes me sick. But nice work either way. Don't walk into that! Fucking one minute cooldown without even- Oh, you walked right into that. That was silly. You were totally okay here. This ulti is hilarious just purely because you actually have it back up again almost instantaneously from the previous fight. Like, that's a minute cooldown. That's so good. You shouldn't be walking forwards here anymore. You should be just waiting at max range, like, as far back as you can, just purely so that you can throw E at range if someone, like, engages. But you shouldn't be walking up here. It's very unsafe. There's a good quadra kill, but again, no reason for you to be forwards here at all. You can't help in any way. You don't have any item that gives help in any way. And you, you, even if you want to greed for this, there's a higher chance of you dying to any sort of engagement, or even Kaisa's ulti on itself, right? So there's no good reason to be forwards here. Just stay back and wait. And then unfortunately, yeah, you get collapsed on. There is a trade there? No, there isn't. So, yeah, that's not good. 
Prep Herald. Fuck, it's just sick. we're still only at 16 minutes. This is hilarious. Kale has not even been involved in this game at all. That's what bot lane coverage looks like right there. Credit where credit's due, mate. This is uh, looking pretty good so far. Glad you didn't spend the ulti there. I was worried you were going to. One day I'm going to get to the bottom of why you named yourself Splenectomy. I'm just going to put that out there. You know, the funny thing is, even though this is a silver game, like, this is kind of what, like, map movement should look like generally, and I want everyone to be, like, aware of that. Like, lane phase should end around the time it did. There should be movements around the map. There should be wards. This is about as good as it gets. Like, if you're ever wondering how games should look, you basically want that balance to work out as well as it does. Oh, that just missed. How unfortunate. Except for that. I mean, nice. But again, this is the same problem I mentioned before. Just being too aggro for no reason. You got... You're getting a little too big for your britches now, bud. Mm. Like, the the plan was to prep Herald. So there's no reason to, like, just go, like, off your chain and do this. Like, you already got this turret. I like how I was talking about, you know, good optimal gameplay, and then suddenly there's an int. It happens every time. Like, I shouldn't even open my mouth anymore. But yeah, like, this shouldn't be engaged on. It's a nice set of poke, but you should be standing apart no matter what happens so that, like, there's actually a chance that Malphite can miss one of you and then go from there. But yeah, this particular play is unnecessary because again, if you just ward set up, take Herald and then use that to take the rest of the base, you probably would win this at 20 minutes. But you could either just hang on to the Herald and then just use that to like to push out a lane whilst you make up the difference and go for Baron. But yeah, either way, I assume they get Herald off this. No, they get pushed away because again, you're, you're both dead. Not really happy with that attempt. Going for anti-heal? Do you need anti-heal? What do they have? Kai'Sa... Who's the support again? Senna. Mm. I mean, maybe. Sag. But they get the objective bounty for free. Just gave him two objective bounties for nothing. Not not a fan of that. And when you're ahead, you really want to get away from that like that plan, you know? So, yeah, not happy with that. I say he dies on his own there. It's sad that you like have to stop in place before you jump. It does not feel good to use, but at least he's dead. Small note, if you're worried about like where you're going to be able to move forwards in the jungle, always put your pink ward down first. So that if it dies instantaneously, it's not the worst thing in the world, just purely because you already know exactly where they are and I have to waste autos on it in the first place. But the other thing as well is that if it's not, at least it's a safe place and it will stay there for the longest time, especially as a good defensive ward. So. Free. Might be time to use that Zonyas. Get ready to eat. Love that. <clears throat> I could be happy that your base damage is actually strong enough to make up for that, but man, missing those things is not good. Oh wait, you went the same way! Well, that was confusing. I get what you were trying to do there, but it, it was very... Nerve-wracking for a hot second. <laughs> Help me! Help the Nico! <laughs> Help little Nico! <laughs> me, all the while Echo is just like ram raiding topside. Just go home. They can get that without you. Oh dear. So unfortunately he takes an inhibitor at 20 minutes. Not the biggest fan of that. Uh, can you not finish anything off that? Unfortunate. Not the greatest uh, means to back on. 
Isn't it so nice that you don't lose gold when you die in League? Because that's uh, definitely saving you a lot of trouble right now. Oh look, I am Jungle Man. That's your ward, so that's fine. You just probably want to lens around like these two areas. So you take, you put, use your lens, start circling from the edge of this, and then you walk over and take out that. And that will give you almost everything you need. You probably start using it roughly about here, so that you're sure if you've got anything on your side, and you're fine to go from there. Only problem is, yeah, there is a cooldown to worry about, but that's not the worst thing in the world. Are we just going for this, are we? You know what? Only because you got his flash, I am cool with it. And the cooldown's low enough to actually warrant it. I feel like just enough ability haste would make that kind of cool. We are at 40. I don't even think you need more. But yeah, this is before the bounties... I think this is this what is recorded before the bounties were hotfixed, by the way. So before anyone asks about why the hell they got so much money so easily, that's part of the problem there. Oh no. Fortunate but unfortunate at the same time. Oh, here we go. <laughs> he just flashes out. Is that enough of that? <laughs> He's not dealing with that today. Not surprised. Splend, turn off your Discord sounds. You fool. I think this is barren. There's enough people bot side to actually warrant dealing with that, and I think you've got more than enough engagement with it. Since you moved your pink ward, or was it someone else's pink ward? Yeah, I was gonna say, since you moved your pink ward, it might be something to consider. I mean, there are traps there, so that kind of makes life easier to just kill him, which is good, but yeah. Just for future, future proofing sake, you really should have just pinked the pit just to make sure. Oh, we love that. Only problem is the back people don't get affected by the by the glacial augment. Yeah, no one's getting affected by glacial augment here, which is a bit unfortunate. You don't have any mana. So that's a throw. So yeah, my only like mad point about this is that like you have to ward the pit and clear it to make sure that that doesn't happen because a lot of things were spent on the Malphite beforehand. Everyone was delayed getting down there. It would have been better off just leaving like Baron at that point because everyone's half health when this rolls around. But now the best part, like this is a good engage, right? This part is cool. I'm totally okay with it. The flash was fine. But the only like drawback, and this is like the big multi-level drawback that is uh, dealing with... Um, that's dealing with Glacial Augment, is you get Glacial Augment on the first part of the engage here, and then the problem is that you don't have the Glacial Augment cooldown available to actually, like, exhaust or hit anyone with this, and you because of your mana issue... You, the biggest problem right now is mana management. Like, we're, we don't have enough mana to actually manage the rest of the cooldowns in this fight. And still, yeah, still no Glacial Augment, no nothing, and we just die off. And he gets a Quadra. Fuck. Why we stopped for red sillies. But yeah, there were four bot and people stopped for red buff. That's very unfortunate. Yeah, Dragon has a chunky bounty as well. Like I said, this is pre the hotfix for the bounties. So don't worry about the bounties at this point in time. Bounties are a little bit more balanced than they were before. Obviously, even Shroud is about to get nerfed, but I think it's... I think, at the very least, it's created good, like, opportunities here. The only problem is, on a personal damage level, you are kind of suffering. And I think the way to fix that is, um... Is to just honestly only engage alongside your teammates. And just have your, yeah, just have your ulti available for those fights. I mean, I get why you're starting it. I don't get why we're doing it, personally. Then again, Jinx kind of can just solo this at this point, because Jinx absolutely frags. Works for me. I assume that's a surrender. That was a mistake. You don't have, you don't have solo this either. This was such a giant mistake. Every time you use this, you keep running alongside the clone. And it's really bad because you keep getting yourself caught out in shitty spots. Because that's, yeah, you don't actually get away from that in time and you get done by the Malphite Yasuo. At least you survive just long enough. 
to maintain your shield, but then you die afterwards. The good news is that Jinx lives, and that's all that's really required, so that's okay. I assume that's game. Yeah, that's probably game. Well, that was certainly better than I was expecting it to go, so I'm cool with it. Totally cool with it. Frostfang 730. Shard of I like that this is here now. Totally cool with that. Go away. Get this thing off my screen. Can't get it off my screen. But yeah, I like that this is there. I hope that stays there. But yeah. Honestly, I like that. If I was ever going to put a sample in for like what good support play looks like it, across any elo, I'll roll with that. If you're looking to be a good support, follow this. Just don't don't war Dragon Pit after it's been wasted. That, let's start with that. But on any sort of like lane of dealing with things, like we're talking about like, you know, early game, early poke, early engages, pretty fucking good showing. Uh, and we should be very stoked for that. Uh, like, I, so I wanted to make this clear. When I, like, released the criteria for this particular patch, obviously I said, you know, we're being a bit lenient on, like, things that go out of control, like, with, uh, as opposed to just, you know, hard games that you should be learning from just purely because it's preseason and we want to test everything as, mo as much as possible. So people are probably going to look at this and be like, Rec, this is, this is not against, this is against your rules. This is against everything you're doing here. And like, you know what? I totally get it. I totally get what you're thinking. I totally get that you think that, you know, it's like one of those ones that's against what I do normally. Honestly, though, for someone like Splen, who has been, like, you know, doing, doing, like, he's been here for a while and has been, like, trying to learn and so on and so forth, I'm totally okay with an improvement VOD here and there. And doing one on the sample, not the worst thing in the world. Because at the very least, we get to showcase things that they've actually learnt and, like, done in. If you go and compare this to Splen's other videos, like the the movement, the, the positioning, skill shot throws, all that, there's a big, big difference. And that's a good thing to see. Uh, purely, like, now, if we could, I'll get into the theory crafting bit in a moment, but, like, purely on, a, like, a personal player skill level, there are good things there to take away from it, and it's something that we should, like, that we should definitely be, like, aware of and should take on board. So that's good. Now, the theory crafting. So, unfortunately, I'm not going to have the full extent of the damage stats. I think I have... Okay, so we have this. Unfortunately, this is the best I've got for that. I don't have the item damage stats, unfortunately. Maybe I'll get them off Splen another time. But just as a note, obviously Transcendence is kind of paying off because it gives you the ability haste to, to knock over to a like is it with 45 to 50 second alt cooldown, so I'm cool with that. Um, but yeah, damage reduced in total, about a thousand. Duration of the enemy chance being slowed 70 seconds. That's fucking baller for the amount of time that we were in these games and the amount of times that it just caught people in place and did its work i'm okay with that total bonus damage over the course of like lane phase till then 400 so i'd say cut that by cut it by about say half ish so about 200 extra damage over the course of lane phase i'll roll with that not the not the worst setup i th i'm starting to think that ingenious hunter might be a good idea as a secondary just purely because there was, uh, what did we go for here? We went for Zonyas and we went for, what else did we go for? Nothing specific, unfortunately. But, I mean, if you're going to go the AP build, it might not be the worst thing in the world. That, that way, like, Ingenious Hunter would help with, um, uh, what's that item called? Proto Belt. So that might be something to consider, but yeah, not the worst thing in the world. So room wise, it went okay. I'm really happy with the way Glacial Augment worked in here. I think Glacial Augment has a lot of like good possibilities in the future. So something to keep an eye on, especially on processing days. I'm expecting some goodness. Then again, it has been nerfed. I think it has been nerfed slightly in PBE. So maybe it won't make it all the way through, but there are there are good ways to to use it, right? So not the worst thing in the world. I think as a rune, it definitely holds up. It's definitely got good uses. It's got good synergies. And it definitely has a lot of potential like with engagements and the mini exhaust and all that sort of stuff. It's good stuff. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, I think, yeah, the, the, obviously the detriment there and probably the best balancing point of it is that there is a cooldown. So if you root like two separate sets of times in a fight, then uh yeah you can't get it on the second time and there was an obvious like thing that showed up there like the obvious like problem where kaisa got a quadra because they got stuck under they got stuck at baron took way too much damage and then you couldn't get a second set of exhausts out for the 
<coughs> for the for the Kaiser to stop snowballing on you. That's understandable, but yeah, generally not a bad like attempt overall. Good use of everything that's there. I'd really like to know how much bonus damage even Shroud actually churned out over the course of it, though. I don't know if like you can actually. If you go back into your replay and you can find it before the patch comes around, maybe, maybe I'll DM you. You know what? I'm going to DM you right now. <laughs> so when you come back and see it, you're going to be like, Hey, what's the go? Yo, can you go into the replay for your VOD and tell me what the damage was for even Shroud in total at the end. And that way, once I finally get it, Maybe I'll slot it in somewhere on the video. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But yeah, I think if I keep talking about the theory stuff quickly, maybe maybe I'll get it before the end. But yeah, just as an overall sort of note, I think like even Shroud has potential. It's unfortunate that he's going to get nerfed. Um, item build wise, I'm kind of okay with the build here. The My only gripe, right? Morellas is an okay item. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's an okay item. It's not great. But I think the problem here is getting to this point and wanting to build specific items and not knowing what to do at that, like with everything you have here, I dig it. I totally get it, right? Now, what I want to know in any stretch of the universe is what what will work out here? Like, you know, what, what will you actually get from anything here, right? Like we've got, you know, X item that, gives you know x and y and so on and so forth so like i like, i want to know like just how much like sort of value you would get from like any of these sort of items you pick up i think morellas kind of does the the job here just purely because there were shield bows uh, in the game and um like warwick does have healing on his own so this is not a bad choice I think the only sort of thing that started like coming into play here that kind of made it a little bit difficult was how on earth do you deal with uh, like just being bloated for items? You, at one point you were stuck with like 1500 gold in your inventory because you couldn't actually buy because you had wards in your inventory, you had all your other items there. And that's not a bad thing, but it definitely was starting to to hurt over the course of, but yeah, not the worst thing in the world. Either way, though, this is a pretty good, uh, pretty good standing for like what to expect for some of the items in season twelve. Like I said, they're going to get nerfed, so probably, probably the weirdest sample you're ever going to watch. If I'm being honest with you, but I like to believe that like all the engagements that happened during these fights and all the sort of like movements and such were really good for it. The one thing I wanted to double check and just comment on: so we had seven control wards, seven wards destroyed, two wards placed. A score of sixty-four. A score of sixty-four in a 24 minute game that is fucking baller i'm pretty proud of that the uh, outside of that the the two major fuck ups with the wards which was the one you placed in dragon pit for absolutely no reason at all and then the one you didn't place in baron pit when you needed to right before that fight went absolutely awry because truthfully with war if there were wards on there and your team spots that and doesn't do baron at that point in time it's probably worthwhile like to just wait, set up, kill and take Baron for free because of the, the stupid delay that people took going to Baron. If they just took it right when the four people showed up, bot, it was okay. But obviously there were fuck ups and we'll live with that. But yeah, vision score wise and actual vision placement wise, pretty good. Again, just take my, my tips about placing the wards a bit, a tiny bit deeper, just so that you can actually see like the goodness of this. But yeah. I would really, I would really just like to know how much, like just how much value we get from all these items generally and how much we can actually like use this thing more often. I think as a consistent build idea, I think even Shroud, like Nika playing as a more like engagey support is working, but you know what the, the only like fathomable, like obvious problem there is here is just obviously you're very squishy like you don't have a, a base steroid that helps you with this now i'm not saying make nico into an engaged support but i mean this has reasons to be useful right obviously the other like gigantic problem is that people will just turn on you inside a fight but that's what zonia's is for but yeah it's really just a matter of like how well can you like sort out and get into these fights and so on and so forth but yeah i think 
on its own, this is a pretty good showcase of what's possible with this build. Wouldn't really make any other changes so far. I think I think Morello's might be a bit of a stretch, honestly. Like I I know that having the uh, the Oblivion Orb is necessary, but hmm. I guess that's kind of where the build starts ending from there. I get that you went for the the stone so you could have more pink wards, which I'm, I'm totally there for because, you know, a bit more health, a bit more ability haste, so on and so forth. Puts you at like, what, 50, 60 ability haste as well? So that's good, more ulties. But yeah, you kind of just, you kind of just hit the, the stride awkwardly for that. But yeah, not the worst thing in the world. I think, hmm... I think because there's no MR being built on the enemy team here, I think you kind of get away with this. Like, obviously, there's, like, tiny bits here and there for, like, you know, this and this. But you kind of get away with going for the, the boots. But I'm starting to think if we are purely building this as, like, a tanky-ish type thing, maybe Tarby might be better so you don't get sandwiched in team fights. But, yeah, not the worst thing in the world. Other than that, pretty solid showing. I'm pretty proud of this. I'm, uh, yeah, I hope... Hope this was something that everyone learned from. This is like a good example of what to actually look for. And hopefully yeah, we get some some more decent bangers heading into the rest of the preseason, the re remainder of the year. And then, of course, season 12 beginning in 2022. So, yeah, hope everyone enjoyed this version of the samples. Obviously, it was a little bit different this time around. Lovely little uh, lovely little treat for the funniness that's gone on in, uh, in this particular preseason. But yeah, hope you all enjoyed. If you're interested in getting a VOD review done by me, check the description for the link to Discord and get all of the info there, private lessons and such. Now, for the month of December, if you're here at this particular point in time, then yeah, for the month of December in 2021, we have the uh, sale. There is a sale on lessons. So if you're interested in getting a discount, you should definitely pop in and see me. Hope this was enjoyable for you all. My name is Rec9. Be excellent to each other. Love you all. And of course, best to you. See you soon. Bye-bye.